And over the last decade, I've watched this country become something I barely recognize. Socially, politically, economically, and internationally, this is not who we are as Canadians. It's time we took our country back. And you and I, we have a community to build. We have a country to build. And I would be honoured to serve as your Member of Parliament for the first for this riding. We've had the biggest problem facing municipalities is that we've had a federal government that has abrogated its responsibility to work collaboratively with the provinces and the municipalities. We have a federal government that has been absent. Problem. I think the Conservative government over the last 10 years have said that they've invested and yet A, there's no new money that's coming and B, it hasn't been in our region. We haven't seen any major investment in any kind of infrastructure that the federal government has partnered with in York Region over the last 10 years. And so while the Conservative candidate will give us an impression that he will work with the provinces and the municipalities, that has not been what's happened over the last 10 years because Stephen Harper has not met with them. So why should we believe that at this point going forward that suddenly they will see a priority to work with the provinces and the municipalities on these major infrastructure programs. We've spent writing. 10 years and we haven't had <coughs> any movement on a subway north of Finch. Well, the Viva what you buses need to, will what simply you need make to it more difficult Leona, for any traffic you need, to move. What you need to We've lost we the ability govern. to have an open, and this is a government shrouded in secrecy. You have a PMO that is unelected, and as we've seen from the Duffy trial, we have no uh, checks and balances on these unelected officials who are actually directing the country. So I find it hard to believe that you had that many free votes when MPs are told exactly what the they can say. The free votes are a matter of public say. record. They can easily be looked up. I prefer for the discussion to speak about the future of this country, so for let's what talk we are going to be doing about our region. constituents, let's for talk what we are doing about our constituents. The question was, what is unique to our community? Manufacturing jobs the question, and the automotive what industry. Well, let's, talk, let's talk about that. <laughs> People in this country are worried about their security and their financial stability and the economy is in recession and we've got a hundred and sixty billion dollars in debt over the last ten years and we have the lowest growth rate since the Great Depression. So how are middle class families doing better? We in Canada don't have a problem paying reasonable taxes to a government to deliver services. And the this services government, the government has, has not delivered, delivered those deliver services, and that's why we're in, in the situation we're there in. Are a record high in our a Liberal government is committed to investing in seniors, certainly by expanding the CPP, which the Conservative government was not open to doing, not even opening to working with the provinces to be able to do that. This one is on immigration. The image of a drowned Syrian toddler resonated with people around the world and create a spotlight on what some experts call a global refugee crisis. What do you believe that Canada needs to do to address the crisis? And what do you think needs to be done to improve or amend the current immigration process? I think that the protection of the citizens under this conservative government it sounds more like an excuse to do nothing than to actually move forward on this. They say that they're committed to expediting the process, and yet we haven't seen anything happen. We've only had about 2,000 uh, refugees come to this country when there are 700,000. Canada has always been a country that is welcoming and that is open to bringing people here, particularly people who are vulnerable and in need. None of the parties are saying that we would do anything less to protect Canadians and not have the normal process to be able to protect and screen and ensure that we don't bring people in who shouldn't be here. But that's not an excuse to not do something and bring people. I've been working with the local religious organizations in Aurora, and they have to come up with extensive amounts of money, and they're still saying that the process will take three years to bring one family of four. The Liberal government will do more and do it quickly. Name the one attribute your party leader has that puts him or her 
head and shoulders above the other choices for Prime Minister. I would well, I'm not going to limit it to one attribute. I think that there are two incredibly important things about our leader, Justin Trudeau. One, his values and his vision for the country. He believes in that what it means to be Canadian. He has always looked at inclusion as being one of our strengths, multiculturalism, the charter of rights and freedoms, collaboration with everyone and working together to make this country what it has been. Peacekeeping and working as a positive force rather than as an aggressor and giving us the hope to believe that tomorrow can be better than today. Secondly, he is part of a team. He can find the strengths in everyone and bring them to the fore and use them to their maximum. He will work with people and bring them together from differing points of view to make the solution even stronger. Provinces, municipalities, members of parliament on all sides. Those are what make my leader fantastic.